All right. Well, hello, everyone. Um, it is the beginning of the 27th annual Telluride Neuromorphic Cognition Engineering Workshops. Um, I'm Guido Zarella, the director of the Institute of Neuromorphic Engineering, I'm responsible for putting on this event. And I'm really thrilled that we could gather everyone, um, our, our, our global community, together for this um, event this year. Um, it became pretty obvious early on that we were, um, as you kind of look at this, this picture of what a typical Telluride workshop might look like, um, you can recognize that social distancing is not um, a part of the typical uh, Telluride workshop experience. And so we knew early on there were going to be some challenges. But we had a lot of great work from the people who helped put this on every year, the organizing committee, and um, we figured that this was our chance to kind of extend ourselves into a much larger, larger um, collaboration than we would ever be able to uh, put on in a, in a regular year. So I'm, I'm thrilled that you're all here. And so um, as opposed to kind of, you know, everyone all in one building here, here we are, this is, this is our schoolhouse. Many of you who have attended will recognize it, but you know, everyone in their own building, but, um, but we're gonna make it work. So, very briefly, um, I'm going to introduce, along with Cornelia Vermiller, who uh, will be speaking next, um, a, a little bit about how this is all going to unfold, because we're all kind of in uncharted territory here, obviously. Um, but we're very optimistic uh, that the format of this workshop will lend itself well to this global collaboration, and we'll talk through how we're going to make that happen. The thing that is kind of important to know about Telluride, if you've, if you've never been before, you recognize this is not a, a typical workshop and it's not a typical conference. This isn't um, an environment where we expect people to kind of sit for eight hours and uh, listen to talks and you know, kind of everyone go back to their lab afterwards and think about what they learned. This is an opportunity to engage with a community of like-minded but diverse uh, intellectual, you know, people um, with ideas that may have some really interesting uh, bearing on your work. And so this is an opportunity to actually work hand in hand with one another, which is, I think, what really makes um, neuromorphic engineering such an exciting community, because we're not in an environment where we could um, all sit down and solve this ourselves, but instead are kind of reliant on a diverse um, set of ideas, you know, electrical engineering, machine learning, and so forth. And so, um, so we have a really diverse organizing committee, people from a number of different backgrounds. So the first thing I wanted to do is give a shout out to um, Shichi and Emre, the general chairs of this year's um, virtual Telluride. Um, they were going to be the general chairs of our actual workshop as well, but they've really done an awful lot to ensure that we keep the momentum going forward. And I'm really grateful that we have this opportunity this year. And the same for Toby, Terry, Andreas. Um, Cornelia did a ton of work putting this all together, as you'll see in the coming days. Shiab and Ralph um, kind of helping to, to move things forward um, and uh, do great things for this community. Um, so I took a look at the stats. Uh, typically, this would be the part of the, you know, the workshop where I tell everyone, uh, drink lots of fluids, don't, um, you know, don't try and feed the bears and tell your ride. Um, that type of thing. But here we all are online. And um, the, I think the really cool thing about this year's workshop is that typically, because of the fact that we have um, housing and a school building in a tiny mountain town in Colorado in the United States, that is um, kind of constrained us in terms of our ability to have a, a massive gathering. You know, we can support about up to 100 people max. Um, and even that is, um, you know, it's asking a lot of a tiny little town like Telluride. But this year we have, um, as of you know, an hour before the start of this, um, this session, we have almost, um, we have 860 something responses of, of uh, registrations rather. And, um, and so I expect that by the end of this week and, and certainly the next month, um, we will have completed a Telluride that's an order of magnitude larger than anything that we've ever done before. So that's really exciting. Um, and it's really exciting because it's not just a, you know, a group of the same people getting together year after year, but you can see here, um, nearly 80% of the 
of the respondents um, to our initial survey are people who've actually never been to Telluride before. So we're really grateful to have this opportunity to bring you into our community, to work together with you over the span of the next month and to get to know you and your work so that we can um, help you um, have impact in this community. Uh, I always also talk about how neuromorphic engineering is not necessarily just a single discipline. It really is many different disciplines in one. And I was really gratified when we looked at the participant backgrounds to see that there was no one field that ever, anyone was coming to us from that dominated um, in, in any sense. So machine learning is kind of the most well-represented field, and even that is less than half of the, um, the registrations. Electrical engineering, neuroscience, signal processing, computer vision, certainly all of these disciplines have an important impact on our field, and we're seeing a lot of the exciting applications um, and the, as the field moves forward, we're seeing this all kind of um, come to light where there's a lot of different um, exciting new innovations in neuromorphic engineering that are making it possible to, to, to build out applications and to invent new ideas. Um, we're truly global. I think it's almost a one third, one third, one third breakdown in terms of major time zone regions of the world. So I also wanna give a shout out to our friends at the um, ICNS in, in Sydney. Um, Western Sydney University who are hosting a GMT plus eight uh, rebroadcast of all of these sessions so that we can collect feedback and um, and show the videos to people in their time zone and we're expecting that as we go forward this the slack channel that you've all heard about in the emails is going to be really important for asynchronous communication and collaboration and then lastly we also have a, um, a breakdown uh, in terms of the people who are participating here that kind of spans every level of um, your potential career. So that's one of the most important things of Telluride, I think, in my opinion, is that it really does connect together different generations of the scientific community. Um, the people who are extremely accomplished and have led this field um, to the PhD students and the, and the postdocs and, and the future of this field, giving them a chance to work together get to know each other and to help us figure out how to champion the work of um, the, the people who are doing the really exciting uh, innovation in the field. So, um, so I'm, I'm really excited that the virtual Telluride is kind of um, uh, just a larger reflection of the great community that we have in Telluride. And, um, and before I hand this over to Cornelia, I just wanna say a massive thank you to our sponsors. This year, um, our costs were much less than typical, but it's very expensive to put a workshop on in Telluride. And to have this type of enduring impact over the last several decades has been really rewarding and that couldn't have happened without the NSF in the United States and a lot of our commercial partners as well. So. Um, consider this our statement that the Telluride workshop will continue on and thrive in the coming decades and, um, and we look forward to partnering with you as we make that happen and, um, and we appreciate the support of everyone here. So with that I'd like to introduce Cornelia who is going to also give us an idea of how this is going to unfold in terms of the day-to-day -day over the next um, over the next week. Cornelia are you online? So Hi, so welcome to the Telluride workshop. As Guida said, this workshop has a very long history and has been very essential in growing our community of neuromorphic engineers. So if you have attended a previous workshop and, have, and you have enjoyed its unique format, then you know that the workshop brings together researchers from many disciplines engineering, computer science, neuroscience, psychology, and we exchange ideas, we learn through lectures. But the interesting part has always been the focus of the workshop. We focus on working groups and students have learned through this, many ideas have been created and future projects and collaborations have been seeded. And in similar spirit to this, we are, have planned this virtual Telluride workshop, both with lectures and with projects. So today's lectures will give you an introduction to the workshop and the field. Shi Chi Liu will be telling us about the history of neuromorphic electronics. And Terry Sanofsky will be telling us about the history and future of the workshop. It was in the early days that the emphasis was of the workshop was on developing hardware that mimicked neurobiology. 
It then transitioned into developing software implementations so of low level perception and motor capabilities on these neuromorphic hardware. And in recent years, we have tackled increasingly more complex tasks, usually with two of the four working groups focusing on cognitive tasks and higher level sensory motor tasks, such as, for example, the foosball playing, if you have seen it. So neuromorphic engineering has come a long way. We now have computing hardware available, such as IBM's TrueNOS, Intel's LOEHI, or the SAIS network sponsored to NSF. We have neuromorphic sensors, the DVS, and the event-based cochlea. Thus, current and future efforts will focus on computing with these devices and developing new theories and algorithms with these devices. This including new approaches in control theory to link perception with actions, new approaches for events, processing and computing with spikes, learning with these spikes and combining multiple modalities. In this spirit, the virtual workshop has been organized. It will have its main focus on computing. Last week there was a, the ICONS workshop whose emphasis was on hardware research. Instead our focus will be on theories of computing and the connection on neuroscience. So on Tuesday we will have presentations on control. Real world moving systems require seamless integration and perception. This is one of the areas where we expect neuromorphic solutions to have a great impact. We expect to create robots and systems that robustly process and react to real world signals in time. On Wednesday, the talks will be on reinforcement learning and cognition. As neuromorphic engineering becomes more and more established, the tasks we address become increasingly higher level. Thursday will be on machine learning and neuroscience. We will hear about embeddings in high dimensional vector spaces, learning with spikes, and auditory cognition for music. And the week will end on Friday with presentations on computing with neuromorphic hardware and sensors. The four projects that are planned go closely with the themes of the workshop. There will be a project on benchmarking, event-based meta-learning, a project on control, learning to race, an integrative project on early motion pathway, and a project on reinforcement learning and imitation learning. There will also be discussions so if you, have, you may not have seen it, but Wednesday and Thursday's lectures will be followed by online discussions. Also, we would like to make the announcement there will be an extra session for those in Asia and Australia, led by Moritz Milde, Greg Cohn, and Andre Van Schaik, who will be replaying the lectures, and they will be available for discussions at the time shown here, 1.30 to 4 p.m., GMT plus 10. Finally, I have an announcement to make. We have just been awarded a large NSF grant under the program Accelerating Research through International Network to Network Collaborations, also called AxelNet. Our AxelNet is on neuromorphic perception, action, and cognition. And so this opportunity, we will network the neuromorphic engineering communities with communities of computational neuroscientists, roboticists, control theorists, researchers working on vector symbolic architectures, and working on computer vision with events. We expect that through collaboration with these computational theorists, and researchers in different areas of computation and robotics, new progress will happen. The funding will sponsor the Telluride workshop for five more years. 
There will also be an immersive research program with 30 semester long scholarships for students and researchers to visit the lab of another group participating in the network of networks and to work on collaborative projects. We will organize two competitions on neuromorphic challenges, give a few scholarships for people to attend the Telluride workshop and some organizational meetings. The project will start beginning of next year. And I'd like to thank our NSF sponsors, especially Su Xiang Lin from the SPE, the directorate, who has believed in us for many years in Claire Hemingway from the Office of Science and Engineering, both who will be working with us for the next five years, as well as Joan Calbertson and Robert Scheidt from the Engineering Directorate who are co-sponsoring this effort. So thank you. All right, well, fantastic. So um, I hope you're all as excited by that great news as, as I am, um, just to kind of underscore um, we expect this coming week and, and month to be a very collaborative environment. So we're looking forward to partnering up with you on the challenges, engaging with you on Slack. We hope that those collaborations found the basis for your involvement in this community going forward over the next many years um, under the banner of this new NSF um, collaboration. All right, and with that, um, I would like to introduce Chi Chi Liu who will be giving us uh, uh, a view into the history of the field and the workshop's role in helping it develop. And um, Shichi, are you, I see you online. Yes, yes, Excellent. I'm ready.